<laughs> say a bunch of cool shit. <laughs> What is up? What is up? I'm here with what Jeff. Up? Indeed, I gotta tweet this up. It's body double night. I'm assuming you're not drawing along with me. Uh, I was not prepared for this, no. <laughs> I wasn't prepared for that draw stream you've been doing all month long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're still doing that? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I told you I just finished uh, that first episode of Cabinet of Curiosities. I like started the second one and realized I wasn't going to have enough time before going live tonight uh so i didn't bother with it yet i'll probably watch it afterwards i am uh i just finished episode four. Oh damn so you are all caught up i am all caught up that first one was slow as fuck man and that was one of the ones i thought i was like really gonna be into uh so the first one i think is the weakest so far out of all four um i love the idea of it like yeah. I liked where they were going with it, but it was just kind of a mess of a script, especially at the end. Like they, they really rushed the end. Yeah, that's the thing is like the beginning is like really slow. It's like it has like two very distinct paces and it's like the first half is very slow. And then the second half is just like cramming shit down your throat like faster than you can process. And I was just like, hang on. And then when they get to the big reveal, it's just, like, over almost instantly. Like, they get yeah, into that yeah. back room, and he's like, don't cross it, and he just crosses it. Like, there's not, like, a fucking a beat of hesitation or anything. And I was like, oh, okay, so this is what yeah. it's going to be like. And This is going to be spoilers, I mean, everybody, so. <laughs> yeah, um, you're dealing with, yeah. like, what, like, 48-minute episodes or something like that all together with the intro and everything. The ending, that, that scene where they find... Uh, the demon really bugged me because, you know, the whole point was that this guy, Tim Blake Nelson, is playing, basically owes his bookies all his money, and he has to, he he finds this, um, these books in a storage unit he bought, and there's a buyer who's going to give him 300 grand for it, but only if he finds the fourth book. And yeah, so he and the, the guy go back to the storage unit and look for the fourth book, and they find this room where there's like a demon and the fourth book open but the whole point like it was really dumb because this guy just wants money right and so when he shows up and he, he finds the fourth book he should have just been like all right there's your fourth book now just give me the money i'm going this is freaky because he says that the whole time like every time the guy tries to bring up like supernatural stuff to him he's like shut the fuck up i just want money i don't care about your backstory <laughs> like which i thought it was great i thought it was cool well, that he was like what, the shit that's where i think like they were trying to show but they didn't like play it up enough or like demonstrate it properly is they're trying to show that he like by him crossing that and everything he doesn't like believe in it thinks it's all like stupid bullshit and he's willing to do whatever to just grab that book get the hell out of there and get his money like he's not buying but like he it, didn't need to, it but he didn't need to though because it's like all right we found your book now give me the money he oh yeah it, i thought he there. was gonna you know like grab that old dude and throw him into it or something. If anything, like if there was going to be like an extreme moment there and there was nothing. And that's the whole thing is like he casually does it. And then there's, there's not even like even a brief moment of like, man, I've fucked up. Like even at the door at the end, there's not like a, Oh yeah. God. Like, well, it was weird. What have like, I, done? I was expecting <laughs> there. So, uh, Basically, what, what the story is, like, just to sum it up real quick, this guy is buying up storage units, like those storage war shows, and the one he buys is all this weird shit, and it turns out to be all this, like, occult stuff. But before then, we find out that there's this little uh, Latina lady who he bought her storage unit, and basically she just wants to get her stuff back because it's all, like, family photos and stuff like that, and he's just kind of, like, a dick to her. And we see her throughout the episode where she's, like, watching him. And you can tell, like, plotting something. 
And it's like, okay, I'm figuring she's going to be a part of this story that we just don't know about. Right. And like, I thought at the end that that part when they're in that room, that he was going to be like, fuck this, I'm out of here. And then that lady was going to get involved somehow. And she was the one that was going to be kickstarting everything. But well, then was the whole, all it is is just that she waits. To, they explained that like weird deal. And that's what made me think the same thing was that like she was somehow going to get more tangibly involved in it than just like, uh, oh, I'm going to lock him in, I guess, or yeah. not l- let him out. But that was like, is, that's what I mean is like if there's like if you're thinking of it like Tales from the Crypt and there's supposed to be like some sort of moral at the end or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, there's no lesson learned. The lady ends up becoming yeah. like a spiteful piece of shit just like him. And that's why I was like, <laughs> thank you. That's okay. what I was thinking the whole time. I was like, <laughs> all right. Like, yeah, I get he was rude, but does he deserve to die? <laughs> like, because he doesn't seem like a bad guy. Like. What I kind of liked about it for the the first like forty minutes or whatever it was is that they set him up to be like nasty and maybe kind of racist. But as you learn to know him, you, you find out like, oh no, he's actually not a racist. He's just a guy who's been dealt a really shitty hand and yeah. he hates his life. And because he even says at one point, uh, he talks he, he talks about being in Vietnam, and this guy is talking to him about like race and stuff, and he was like, look, everybody in my unit was green. And I was yeah. like, oh, that's a nice sentiment. You know, like you can tell he's not, he's just, he's bitter. He's not evil. Yeah, he's, he's, not he's, hateful, he's pissed bitter. at the, the hand that he's been dealt. And even though, you know, there's a bunch of cases all around him of people being like, yeah, we all got a shitty hand, dude. Like you learn to, right. you know, sort of harmonize with the people you have around you and find, find some good in all of that. But that's what I mean is like there's, there's like a moral to be pulled from it, but no one in the actual story really learns like no. a lesson or it, anything. It was so weird because it's like I don't really think he needs to learn a, a lesson of death <laughs> from from not giving a lady her photo books. You know? <laughs> yeah, and that's where I thought it was gonna like reveal something, like you know, like he's like sincerely apologizing, and she's gonna say something in Spanish, and that demon's just gonna you know walk back into the storage unit, and it was just gonna right. end or whatever. But yeah, like it's so inconsistent, and like he deserves to die, even though the way the script was written and everything. He doesn't find out he's getting he got this lady's stuff until after he's gotten rid of like the majority yeah. of it. And yeah. he tells he finds her out that. after he's already bought the property and sold a bunch of shit. And she no goes to him and says it was like lot 78 and the storage unit that he's actually clearing out in the episode is lot 36. It's literally what the episode's called. So I was like, what the fuck is going Okay, so this yeah, guy just went about too. his business like he normally does. I The way I took it was he cleared out her unit at, at some point, and we don't see it. And he basically tells her that. Like, mm-hmm. he cleared out anything worth value and went and sold it, and everything else went into a dumpster. And he basically tells her, like, hey, I can show you the dumpster I put it in, but that's the best I can do at this point, lady. Like, that ship has already sailed. I'm really sorry the people who run the storage unit fucking suck at their job. There's nothing I can do. And he's even more polite about it than the way I just framed it. Like, I was mm-hmm. like, what the fuck is going on? Uh, but that was one where I haven't read the the short that it's based on or anything. So I have, like, no fucking clue what to expect on a lot of these. Like, the only one I was super familiar with was Pikmin's Model, and I talked about it the other night. I haven't read that since like high school, so I don't even remember it completely. I just remembered that it was oh, like yeah. about an artist and it was like driving people nuts. Yeah, I love Pikmin's model, and they also have uh, Dreams in the Witch House by H.P. Lovecraft, too. Yeah, but I think the they're all ones, I don't H.P. Know. Lovecraft uh, shorts. I don't think so. I'm almost certain. I don't know which um, one this would be based on then. The. Lot thirty six, or yeah, I don't know, but I know, I know. Pikmin's model is maybe it is different. Yeah, Yeah, Pikmin's model and Dreams in the Witch House. Graveyard Rats is also too, because I think the Graveyard Rats was one of the ones I had on vinyl way back in the day. There was Um, the Rats in the Walls, but I think that's different. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, 
Because I think, I, well, tonight's episode was Aloe Glow. It was like this uh, skincare routine thing. So I don't think that was based on anything that I know yeah, of. Yeah, that would be weird if that's... <laughs> to, he, he predicted futuristic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he fucking predicted skincare regimens for women and shit. But uh, like, I enjoyed the first episode. It was just at the end, like, I was expecting everything to come together, and it just didn't, and they just rushed everything, and it kind of made no sense in the end. Okay, Lot 36. Lot 36 is based on a short story by Guillermo del Toro. Graveyard Rats oh, okay. is a Henry Cutner short story. Uh, the mm, Autopsy yeah, is a Michael Shea short story. The That's Outside a really good is one. a Emily Carroll short story. Episode 3, I'm curious to see that one. Pickman's model is the HP Lovecraft dreams in a witch house. I thought there was more for some reason. Uh, the viewing is the one I'm really curious about and it doesn't say who wrote it, but I'm assuming it was probably Panos Cosmatos. Cause I think he writes all of his stuff. Yeah. That's uh, the one I'm most looking forward to. Yeah, dude, the viewing uh, and is it has Peter, Peter Weller, Weller in it. It, it is. Yeah. Okay. I, I think Peter Weller is the demon in it. Cause it says it's all about like a viewing party for a demon. And I saw a screenshot early on of this like old demonic looking creature that when they were showing like press stills for it and it looks like old ass Peter Weller. And I was like, holy fuck, does Peter Weller play like the devil in like a weird like art house viewing party for Satan? And Eric and Andre trailer, is in that one too. I think Eric Andre. In the trailer, you hear his voice. And I was like, that sounds like Robocop. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to shoot what your up, dick Charles off Reed? now. Uh, Jennifer Kent directed one of the episodes, The Murmuring. That was the chick who did The Babadook. Oh. Uh, hmm. uh, Catherine Hardwick, who directed 13 and Lords of Dogtown and the Twilight movie. Didn't she also do uh, American Psycho? Uh, Catherine Hardwick. Uh, if so, yeah. it's not listed in her uh, links for this just Wikipedia article about it. Keith Thompson is known for the Vigil and the new Firestarter remake. I don't think I've seen oh, any of that guy's stuff. Uh, A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night is the Anna Lily Amir Poor. Yeah, she's the one that did tonight's episode about the skincare stuff. It was pretty good. Oh, okay. The outside. Yeah. Uh, and then the, the autopsy. The oh, hell yeah. The autopsy was the other one that I was looking forward to anyways. It's written by Goyer, and uh, David S. Goyer wrote it, and then it's directed by the guy who did The Empty Man, and I fucking love that. Like, I yeah, really dude, hope... It's a really good episode. Really fucking hoping some boutique like Blu-ray distributor picks up the Empty Man to do a physical release of that because the fact that that's one of the things that's like disappearing with the WB shit is ridiculous. Like that movie was actually fucking awesome and nobody yeah, watched it. That was a really good movie, and it has like uh, that movie is cool because basically each um, act of the film is like a different movie. Yeah, you know, like the, there's one that's all like supernatural feeling like. Uh, culty and stuff like that, and then there's another one that feels more like a noir detective element, and you know, it reminded me a bit of uh, well, is it Kill List? Have you seen that? Yeah, yeah, by uh, the guy that did A Field in England. I'm forgetting his name. Yeah, it had a it had a bit of a Kill List vibe like that, where like every time you sort of were getting into the rhythm of the movie, it would just like completely change itself, and you were like, oh, hang on a second. But not like genre bending in like crazy ways where you there wasn't still like a through line. Like the movie does a good job of kind of making you feel like you're losing your mind slowly over time. And I liked the uh, the like audio design in that one a lot, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. in the like second half with all the like weird like radio signal sounds and shit like that. Uh, I still Wheatley. That's his name. That's his name. Yeah. Uh, he. I think he had another one come out more recently too. He, he. I think he's working on a big movie. I can't remember which one it is though. That might be what I'm thinking of. I was like, I s remember seeing. Uh, I really like the guy's movies. A Field in England is great. Um, Free Fire is awesome. 
Free Fire is fucking great. That is one of my favorites. I never saw High Rise. I don't know about that because I just don't High Rise really is like okay. That. I'm not in love with it, but I enjoyed it. But Free Fire, and this is the thing I always tell people like, Brie Larson sucks as a person, but she is a good actress, and she's great in Free Fire. Yeah, she's a great character actress. It's insane. Like, and like, I think it's funny that a bunch of people were just like, she ain't hot because she used to be like the go to. Like, you're going to play someone slutty in this real quick. Oh, no, she's gorgeous in Free Fire. She's Freak crazy shift, hot in that a band of misfits hunt down and kill underground nocturnal monsters. He's got a movie Ooh. coming out that sounds awesome, and the art that on it great. looks like some sort of knockoff Mike Mignola did concept art for it. Um, And our boy, what's his name from District 9, is in Free Fire, and he's like the best part. Oh, yeah, Sharptal Copley. Sharptal Copley, yep. He's amazing in that movie. Yeah, Every fucking line he great. fucking says, it has to be ad-lib, because he's hilarious in it. Yeah, there's so much. Army Hammer is great in that one. Like, there's there's a yep. there's an awesome cast, and it's like one of those movies where, even if you're not fully paying attention, it's still like wildly enjoyable because it's just so well written and tight. But like, mm -hmm. I think that was one of the ones where I watched it and ended up going back and watching it again like a week late after I had seen it the first time, because uh, it was so damn good. I'll end up doing that. I'll like watch a random movie on my own, and I'm like, "Oh shit, this is actually good." Now I need to show it to Beth. Have a? Uh, did you see the second episode of Kevin the Curiosities yet? No, I got like I said, I got like 15 mm. minutes into it and stopped because I knew I wasn't gonna have a uh, enough time to to finish. I like that one a lot. It's really good. It it's probably my second favorite so far. The That's Autopsy's my favorite, rats, right? And the Graveyard Rats is my second. Because that one, it kind of gave me a... Yeah, I got up to I the know, fat like guy. At one point. The fat guy's like down in the tunnel or whatever, or grave, mm -hmm. I think it was. And he pulls out yeah. the 1911 on the rats. And then yeah. I was like, <laughs> I'm not going to have enough time to finish this. And I was also laughing because it's like, oh, I love that 1911. But also against a bunch of rats, that's a mess. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Good luck, guy. But it's, got, but a, yeah, it's I, got a cool um, style to it. I really liked it. Yeah, I like that one more so. Like, I I like the color grading and everything in them so far. Like, I was really expecting, even though they are only, you know, like 50 minutes long or whatever, I was kind of expecting a bit of that CW vibe we've been getting a shitload of in, yeah. in just, like, horror and film in general lately. So to get, like, basically what's, like, an anthology TV series that is, like, on par, if not better, than most, like, films coming out lately is pretty cool. Oh, yeah. It's got that vibe of, like, almost kind of like Masters of Horror, where they really yep. gave them a good budget to make stuff. Um, yep. And, like, you were saying, the color grading, like, it feels very Del Toro. Like, we just watched Crimson Peak over the weekend, and it looks like a, a lot like his color palette in a lot of those yeah. episodes so far. So I, fits, I wonder if he has like, like his right in people with, working with on all that. his stuff. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was like a big part of the whole like it being his production is all the directors are distinctly their own voice, but he sort of like mentored over them. So he yeah. had like input and in things, but he let all the directors have like final cut and things like that. He just sort of gave them, you know, like if you can have Guillermo del Toro's fucking input on your project you would say yes every time and that's essentially yeah, like what every is. episode is is pretty gorgeous and there's lots of practical effects that are great like really good designs like uh, guy davis worked on yeah because uh, his company his company does everything like guy davis does all the uh co he's basically like the closest thing to an in-house uh concept designer for guillermo del toro's like uh mm -hmm effects team i always forget the name of that studio too and i feel so bad that i'm just like it's del toro's effects guys but they actually have like a studio name and i never remember it but they've been working with them for ages now they did the hellboy movies and pan's labyrinth and all that and uh it's always using guy for a, a backbone for the concept stuff and it's fucking awesome like even that first the the monster in that first episode the lot 36 one is like you can you can tell uh the team behind it immediately 
Uh, yeah, the practical yeah, that's stuff looks great. This that's the other thing. The blending of CGI in this is like way better than like people were going ape shit about that Prey movie, and I was like, yeah, it was a milk toast movie or whatever. But it was like the CGI was so solid in that movie, people kept thinking it was fucking CGI uh, when it was practical and practical when it was CGI. So mm -hmm. uh, they did a good job in there. I think it's even better in this. Like I, that was one of the things I noticed right before I paused it uh, to come record was the rats looked exceptional, like the lighting and stuff on them and how you can actually see like the, the detail and the little like fibers in their fur and shit. I was like blown away by that. I'm like, wow, oh, yeah. that's such an incidental shot of just like little rats crawling in a hole, like crawling up this guy's legs and they focus in on one of them and it doesn't look all like it could have been a real rat. They, they just like CGI'd like an eye missing on, but it looks fantastic and doesn't take you out of it immediately. And there's really great practical effects towards the end of that one too, um, with a bunch Still of different designs. And uh, the autopsy also has a bunch of cool stuff. And it kind of gave me that vibe of like, uh, uh, like reanimator and autopsy of Jane Doe and all that kind of stuff. It's really cool. Is that the one with Emil Hirsch? Yeah, yeah. That was really good. Fucking him and, what was it, Brian Cox or something, I think? Yeah, who did that one? I don't know. That was really good. I haven't seen that in a while. Uh, it's hard to find. Like, they don't usually have it streaming anywhere. Yeah, that was like a, a bunch I, of movies like that that are like really good and you know, get a little bit of buzz, but they don't stream. I liked it. I guess it might be on Amazon, but uh, I mean, you can buy it and rent it, but I'm not talking about like free. Oh, yeah, I thought it was on Amazon for free. Yeah, Brian Cox was the main dude. I was like, I can't remember if that was actually Brian Cox. Andre Avradal. That sounds familiar, but I have no uh, idea. Oh, yeah, it's the guy who directed Troll Hunter. I did know that. Oh, okay. I still haven't seen that. Dude, really? You, you no. the big fantasy nerd, and you haven't seen fucking Troll Hunter? Yeah, but I mean, it. The trailer. I heard a lot of good things, but the trailer didn't like like grab me. Oh, dude, go watch it. Uh, it's good. I think you would really dig it. Uh, I think it's one of the better found footage movies to like really ever do found footage. Uh, I think the effects look really good, and it's like one of the few things with like a fantasy element that I actually enjoyed. Uh, I I really enjoyed Troll Hunter. I thought they were doing another one, uh, more recently, or maybe I'm thinking of like an American version of it. Uh, I didn't know he did the scary stories to tell in the dark movies too. Oh yeah, that was a good one. There's a connection to Guillermo del Toro right there, and he's on pre-pro for the second one right now. Hmm. That is one thing too I liked about this series is that um, the directors he got are all really interesting. They're not like you're the only one that's like a standard one, I think, is that chick that did Twilight. Yeah, and 13 and all of that. I was like, what the hell? Yeah. Like, but everybody else, like Vincenzo Natale, like he's always just doing weird shit, you know? <laughs> and Panos Cosmatos, like. You never really see him in anything, so... I literally, like, b before they officially announced the lineup for this show, I was like, man, I don't care what the fuck the next thing Panos Cosmatos does is. I'm going to see it. He's oh, my yeah. favorite fucking, like, director right now that's doing new stuff. When like, I, I saw guess, the trailer director. for Beyond the Black Rainbow, I was like, I'm just I buying still, it. I just yeah, I bought I still, it on Blu-ray before. And just as soon as it came out, I was like, I, I know I'm going to love it. I can just tell me. Yeah, <laughs> I need to get that on Blu-ray. I have Mandy uh, now, but I have yet to pick up Beyond. I've seen Beyond the Black Rainbow a bunch of times, but that's like a big movie that when I cite to the dudes like, hey, we could do a whole film that's like all vibes and visuals and still be successful. Uh, we just got to think outside the box and get really weird with it. And uh that's always like the top of my list for that kind of shit. Cause I'm like, it has a narrative, but it's real loose with it. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. But you know, and he also comes from a good lineage, you know, his dad directed tombstone and shit. 
Yeah, and Cobra who gives a fuck about True. Tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> the rules. The de- the guy that invented cutting pizza with scissors. <laughs> I want to say he also did Rambo First Blood Part 2. I'm now wondering, too. Was, uh... Are they Greek? He did a bunch of cool shit. I don't remember all, everything, but... They gotta be Greek, right? With a name like that? Oh, yeah. That's, like Greek. That's Greek as fuck. Yeah, now I'm thinking. I think that... That scissors on pizza was a literal... Coordinated act of war. Against the Italians. <laughs> against the Italians. Yeah. You're the true Mediterraneans. Yeah. C- c- you don't enjoy pizza like, enough. Take these scissors and cut up this pizza. It'll piss off the Italians. <laughs> <laughs> we may get the best olives. Yeah, that's some shit they really care about. I bet it didn't fuck. A war. I'll bet there was like an olive war back in like the 1300s between Italy and Elk Greece. on the border. Yeah. 10,000 died in the olive was- wars. <laughs> It must have been the, the Greasiest War. <laughs> Just the hairiest war. Yeah. And gay. Real gay. <laughs> Gayer than the new Hellraiser. Why is this war just naked dudes wrestling? <laughs> yeah. I thought we were supposed to be killing each other. <laughs> Fucking to death is the greatest death. Fucking to death. We gotta fuck our way out of this one, boys. I'm just getting set up here to draw. I got my nice mixed media Strathmore paper to test out came in today. Ooh. The heavyweight stuff. Shout out to Jeff Lashley for recommending it to me. Uh, watch out. Pickle. Oh, I didn't turn on my other light again. All my lights in this office are in, like, the worst position for my drawing table. My wife so stole my good light. My snake turn light. On all of them. Yeah, they always do that. Wives, man. Steal all our shit. Oh, yeah, man, did I I'm really fuck? I'm thinking Curiosity so far. Like, uh, that first episode's kind of, like, so-so. But everything else I think is pretty good, pretty solid. It's at least like filling that Tales from the Crypt void. So I'm happy about that. Yeah, that was my whole thing. Is like they're not, they're definitely fucking light years better than the Creep Show stuff on Shudder. Which Dude, really. I saw the one episode. We just put it, we, we just found out about it. And I was like, oh, I used to love Creep, Creep Show. And so we put it on. And the first episode was like these country bumpkins. And immediately the, the woman is like, you're a piece of shit, racist, you know, insurgent, <laughs> insurrectionist. Dude. And like just throwing out all it. I was like, no, nope, we're turning it off. <laughs> this is done. Yeah, it, it feels like a, like the producers or something. Like it feels like it was like a tax trick. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. The acting just in that 10 minutes was terrible. And the production, yeah. you could tell, was cheap. And well, there's dude, the so opening, many people. The opening I, looks like they just hired a fiber artist to make. Well, the craziest thing to me is there's so many people involved in the show that I absolutely love that I was like, okay, like this has to be some sort of concerted effort on scene where they're like, like intentionally making it like really schlocky and just not like hitting on what that actually is like not being able to harness the same magic that like Romero and King did with the original movies. It is so fucking like Greg Nicotero does the fucking effects for that show. Oh, really? Yeah. It shouldn't be bad. I got to grab my pen real quick. I forgot. It shouldn't be bad, but it is. Yeah. It it shouldn't be bad. Like there should at least be like cool creature designs and stuff. But it's like, it feels like everyone on there, like if they were trying to act or anything like that, whoever produces it is like, whoa, no, 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 no. You got to be shittier. Like <laughs> on every take. It's it's crazy how I've yet to see an episode where I'm like, wow, that was fucking cool. Like totally worth all the other stuff sucking. Like it's just been across the board 
dog shit. Uh, you know what I am so looking forward long. to is uh, 1899. Oh, yeah, from the Dark Guys? Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be it fucking awesome. awesome. I haven't even Dude, finished Dark, was dark a great yet. show. Oh, really? Oh, man. Yeah, no. So good. I got to go back to that. Pulling up some, some reference here. We can talk while I draw. Body double. Yeah, 1899 is the new show by the creators of Dark. It looks like it's taking place on some kind of like Titanic like ship. Comes out soon. Too, right? from all over the world. Uh, it comes out in November. I think November 17th, maybe. Hell yeah. And, but of course, it has some kind of weird supernatural stuff. There's pyramids, there's like weird portals, there's a ghost ship called the Prometheus. I don't know what's going on, but it looks dope. I'm excited. Jeff's excited. Dark was one of my favorite shows of like like the last 10 years. That show was great. You hear that? Jeff's excited. There's been a lot of good TV shows lately and horror related TV shows. Yeah, Apple baby. Rain, horror's horror's back. I've been kind of iffy on Del Toro too. Like, I really like Del Toro when he's doing horror, but I don't like a lot of his stuff when he goes outside of it. Like that Shape of Water movie, I thought was terrible. Where oh, banging fish or whatever. I haven't seen. Yeah, it. and uh, what's that? What was that fucking Pacific Rim? Is cool for all that the monster fighting action in it, but everything else I think is just so dopey. I just like him doing horror, doing scary stuff. Yeah. That's where he's best. Even Nightmare Alley was like, it's an okay movie. But I was shocked that it was like getting nominated for all these awards and shit. It's like, it's all right. I mean, you wouldn't even know it was Del, Tor uh, Del Toro if you were watching it and somebody didn't tell you. It's just one of it those was... needless remakes that he wanted to do. Yeah, it's got to be like some kind of passion project. Yeah, I, that's the vibe I got. I was like, was this like the first fucking movie this dude ever saw? Like, why is this so important? Like, yeah, it just feels like, I don't know, like very um, contrite or something. Like for a, a film, like I, I can see how great it would have been in the past. It's almost kind of like, you know how they, they say like people's reaction to John Carter was so lukewarm because they've seen everything that that John Carter spawned since his creation. Yeah. But they haven't seen John Carter. I feel like that with Nightmare in Alley. It's like, all right, we've seen all these things done in a million other films now, but we're seeing like the original film that started it all. So it's not really like hitting the same way. Yeah. It's the excitement of the known. And like, what's his name? Uh, Bradley Cooper. I just don't think he's an exciting actor. Like they needed somebody a little bit better in that role. Somebody could have pulled off that skeeviness, but also the, uh, you know, like more gentle side that makes you want to believe him. Whereas Bradley Cooper, I don't know. He just, I think he's really overrated. He's just an okay actor. He's not bad, but he's never blown me away in anything he's been in. Other than those Hangover movies. You love those Hangover movies. Oh, can't get enough of them. Wolfpack, bro. <laughs> You're always talking about that Asian guy's dick. How so much many you love times. It. So hilarious. <laughs> this conversation is funnier than those movies. <laughs> no, but dude, Mike Tyson, bro. Mike Tyson's in it. Yeah. No, I don't hate those movies or nothing, but I never really... Like, I saw Bruno, I think, when the first one came out. Like, we rented both of those movies. And The Hangover just seemed, like, so poor in comparison. Because we watched Bruno first, and I was like, oh, this is the <laughs> funniest thing ever. <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's literally just this crazy gay guy that's making celebrities do the stupidest things. And then you cut to just so-so com comedic actors doing, like, something that would have been funny maybe 10 years before that. <laughs> I don't know. Good shit. 
Bruno had like what was it? Paula Abdul sitting on a person. <laughs> he, oh my god! I he used, I she used an actual person as a chair. <laughs> And he starts uh, a riot at an MMA competition <laughs> <laughs> while he's trying to butt fuck his boyfriend. <laughs> Apparently, he's going to be Mephisto. Yeah, that's what they're saying. Mephisto, my ass. Huh? You pay me good enough, I will. <laughs> I don't know if you can legally say that because I do pay you. <laughs> <laughs> the feds are going to kick in my door for prostitution. I'll do anything for a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, yeah. Quite the Patriot. <laughs> up in the background. <laughs> <laughs> they call me Kid Fisto in Star Wars. Kid Fisto. <laughs> Yeah, you're going away for a long time with a name like that. <laughs> <laughs> what are you in here for? You know my name? <laughs> Probably best you don't. Give him a wide berth, everybody. <laughs> or he'll give you one. <laughs> That's my Star Wars name. Wide berth. <laughs> My birth to go over after Jabba the Hutt was killed. <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> yeah, I don't talk all stupid like he did. <laughs> yeah. Just go over here and suck my dick. <laughs> I know English <laughs> like a real American. <laughs> I mean, wherever the fuck we are. <laughs> yeah, you know, He's I heard you really did fuck Leia. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Listen, we all know what happens. cool. We're in space. <laughs> She's only your sister on Earth. What's Earth? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that place is not cool with we? brothers and sisters doing it, but we're in space, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Play ball. <laughs> Star Wars by George R. R. Martin. <laughs> right. I liked it, but there wasn't enough doing your brother. <laughs> They pretty much just okay. killed Han Solo in the first act, and then it's just Luke and Leia banging it out for the rest of the show. Yeah, for six seasons. <laughs> All right, George, there's enough. All right, they got eight kids, and they got like four arms between them. <laughs> yeah, none of the kids can read or see. <laughs> no, they don't need it. They got the Force. <laughs> yeah. Force cataracts. <laughs> Oh no. I keep breaking the lead with my shaky ass hands. I should just do all these blinds detail and then just a pair of tits smashed to the glass. <laughs> <laughs> it's all subtle. Yeah, I'm watching this lady get down. Oh, damn. <laughs> just, just open them up, slamming them into the window. Does she know I'm back here? <laughs> <laughs> Just cracking God the damn, window lady. with them. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> oh my god. He's just dabbing the sweat off his brow. <laughs> the secret. Have you seen this one? The secret? No, body double. The Jalloween movie it? tonight. Who made it? Brian De Palma. Oh, um, it's the porno is that the one, one with uh, Michael Caine? No, that's uh, that's Dress to Kill. We did that. That's oh, right, right. Trans Michael Caine. That's from Dress to Kill. I know uh, I've seen it because I know I've seen Body it Doubles, the, the one stuff. with the guy who looks like Bill Maher. And uh, was it Melanie Griffith? This is like a porn star. And, uh, oh, really? Uh, yeah, it's back when she was like considered like a smoke show too. So she's like 
at the height of her hotness and uh, getting railed out on film is like her whole character. <laughs> uh, and this dude who looks like Bill Maher gets to rail her out on film. It's I'm a weird rail movie. you out, okay? Yeah. For the Republicans and the Democrats. I don't want to hear anything about how much it hurts, all right? A <laughs> real dong with Bill. <laughs> no unsimulated sex here. New rule. Shut up when I'm getting down. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Rapist Mar. <laughs> <laughs> I don't take those. <laughs> yeah. Oh, after I hate that dude. Just reads and, the paper in front of her. Yeah, I hate that dude so much. Like his show. Like I always could not stand that fucking dude. Just like a weird visceral reaction, and I couldn't like articulate why. And then. YouTube recommended me that man's podcast with Quentin Tarantino like two weeks ago, and I'm like, oh, wow. This guy's actually cool as fuck if he's not on that dumb show. Yeah. Because uh, he that show made him, like, believe that he was in, like super intelligent and awesome, and he had to put on these, like, these airs of superiority all the time. But on his podcast, he's just like a dude hanging out and smoking weed. Yeah, getting high so with Tarantino more chill. And talking about dumb shit. Like, yeah, I was waiting for him much. to be like, you ever see that De Palma movie with the guy who looks like me in it? I was like, <laughs> yes. Finally, he's chill. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was crazy. But yeah, this movie is like hard to wrap your head around the whole time because the main character looks so much like him and it's not him. So, like, the entire movie, I was like, oh, no, that's got to be him. And I, like, refused to look it up on IMDb. It's and it's Bill not. Maher with, like, two R's instead of HR. Yeah. Uh, or it's but Bill, it's Bill Maher, B-E-E-L. It's Maher. one of the craziest stories ever, though. The guy's like a, you'll remember it if, the, like, this might jog your memory. Uh the guy's like a failing actor in a shitty horror movie and his buddy invites him to move in. I always forget the actor's name too. Uh, hang on a second. You'll know the actor. He was in payback. I think with Bruce Willis back in the day. Okay. He's one of the main bad guys in that. If I remember Greg Henry, uh, if that name rings any bells, I'm pulling up the Wikipedia. Yeah, it's Greg with three G's. Wait, did you mean uh, Payback with Mel Gibson? Yeah, what did I say? Bruce Willis. Did I really? <laughs> yeah. Yes, Payback with Mel Gibson. I don't know why I said Bruce Willis. But uh, yeah, Greg Henry uh, is uh, in Body Double as well. And basically the Bill Maher dude... Uh, is like a failing actor, gets kicked off the horror movie he's working on because of his crippling claustrophobia. And uh, uh, he gets replaced, essentially, and he needs a place to stay out in L.A., so Greg Henry, his buddy, offers him to stay at his apartment because Greg Henry's oh, another actor. And he's, he's doing really Slither. well at the time. Yes, exactly. Yeah, he's great. Uh, yeah, he's great in body double as well, if you've never seen it. So basically that Maher dude's down on his luck actor out in like the, the L.A. area. And uh, Greg Henry is his buddy and takes him in. But Greg Henry says he's going out of town for a movie shoot or some shit and that he needs somebody to watch the house anyways. So Maher dude's doing him a favor. And Greg Henry on his way out's like, oh, you'll love this. If you look in my telescope like four or five blocks away, there's this smoking hot chick that every night at the same time or like every week at the same time, like once a week or something just fucking like gets naked in front of her giant bay windows and dances. If I had a nickel for every time somebody wanted me to look in their telescope and see a naked lady, but yeah. it's always a penis. 
So that is literally like the entire setup for the story is like this guy has to crash at his friend's house because he lost his job and his buddy is like a raging pervert and is like, check this out. There's this hot chick that dances naked in the window all the time. And the story like unravels as a mystery from there. <laughs> yeah, like you could make a whole movie around that. But basically the whole premise is he he's, you know, being a voyeur pervert and like checking this chick out every night. And then he witnesses someone break in and murder her, and that's like what starts the story off. But it's so this it's like weird... a rear window kind of like vibe to it. Yeah, it's very Hitchcock because that like De Palma is a big Hitchcock nerd, and that's why it's sort of like yeah. American Jalo and why it landed on the list. But it's also one of my favorites, even though it's not like a perfect movie by any means. I still think it's fucking great, and it's also kind of wildly racist. Uh. But I can't say anything. You had me at racist. Spoiling, yeah, without <laughs> spoiling the entire movie. Uh, did you ever see that one he did with Kirk Douglas? Or it was like about like the Fury telepathy. Yeah. Fuck telethe- yeah, dude! The motherfucking Fury. <laughs> of course, I've seen it. Of course, I have seen it. Yeah, I honestly think it was uh, one of the uh, films that inspired Metal Gear Solid because Kojima is a big nerd and he literally oh, ended yeah. up naming a villain the Fury. And I mean, that would make total he, sense. He has like tons of telepathy throughout Metal Gear Solid and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, I always thought that was just one of the ones that like inspired Metal Gear and Kojima in general. And I love De Palma. Like I said, I have that fucking stupid the phantom of the paradise tattooed on my arm man <laughs> nice <laughs> i'm a big de palma nerd <laughs> the de palma rules i love his cinematography too yep just a weirdo dude i'm not even sure if he ever was really like crazy about drugs either but he like seems to whether he is or not can like harness uh the the vibe and countercultures of the time successfully without feeling contrived I think that's why I always really liked Phantom of the Paradise, too, is it's such a weird musical. It got overshadowed by fucking Rocky Horror Picture Show. But uh, I think is like the superior musical. Uh, it's also fucking Paul Williams doing the music, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shit rips. But yeah, De Palma's always rocked. And everybody just really knows him for, like, Scarface. Well, he's also, like, really, Scarface is, like you said, the only one that people really talk about of his. I mean, you know, he was in that whole group of, like, Spielberg, Scorsese, uh, what's his fucking name, The, the Godfather? Yeah, Coppola. Coppola. Coppola so he was in that dudes. whole group of dudes, and he's, but he's the one that always kind of was, like, more the like underdog out of all of them. Yeah, it seems to have continued throughout time too. Like, because he's technically still around today. But yeah, yeah, he's always had a solid career. He did the first uh, Mission Impossible movie. Yeah, always forget that. Yeah, it's a good one though. They're they're all good. The worst one is the second one, and it's still just like an okay action film, but. Sadly, Mission Impossible is like the closest thing we'll begin to Bond movies from now on. They're better than Bond movies. Fucking Ethan Hunt rules. They just become the replacement because Bond shit. They're too much with like, uh, like as soon as you try to like get with the times and not just you know stick with your fans, uh, shit starts to go off the rails. Yeah. It's like some people don't want 2022 James Bond. They want that misogynist James Bond of a bygone era. But they keep double downing on, on uh, their direction for the character. They kept saying like for the next franchise, they were talking about that too. They were like, it's a Bond for a new era. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they shouldn't make a, a woman Bond or anything. They should just have him go trans in the movies. <laughs> Let's go full tilt with it. 
Like he has he's to like cut his of America penis style. off for a mission. Yeah. Wrapping a rubber band around it and cutting it off with a cigar cutter in a hotel room. You were previously 007. Now you're just double O. <laughs> yeah. You're just double O's now. <laughs> double D's when you get back to MI6. <laughs> Did you just dead name me, Blowfield? Oh, um, I... Well, I was <laughs> <laughs> tut, tut. <laughs> I'm about to just dead name from Twitter. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm pulling your whole Yeezy line. <laughs> da -na -na -na. <laughs> so how will we solve this case, Bond? Will we shoot him? Will we poison him? No. We'll release text messages that show him as an anti-Semite. Then, no social media platform will carry him. He'll be ruined. Boom. <laughs> The end, and the movie just ends five minutes in. Bond on the street blowing a guy. <laughs> so powerful, so brave. Is he dead? Worse. <laughs> He's not even just working. See him going down on it like an anaconda. <laughs> so dirty, old homeless guy. <laughs> James, that's not my name anymore. <laughs> they call me Deep Throat out here on the streets. <laughs> Burner, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get a better fucking ruler. This triangle sucks. Oh, here we go. With the lift kit and everything. I miss money penny now. Da -da, yeah, right. da -da. Go, 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 go. <laughs> it's blowing everybody in the office. <laughs> miss money penny just packs her things. Well, I, I guess that's okay. It just leaves. <laughs> Replacing all the women <laughs> with more manly versions. Yeah, I'm just looking for a tougher model. <laughs> I like my women built for tough. <laughs> just Nick Nolte as James Bond now. I'm a woman. Oh, haggard. <laughs> I'm Jane Bond. Just I'm going to blow you away. Out oh, here. No, no. <laughs> blow you away? No, I'm going to blow you. <laughs> Come here. Sit down. Go on. Don't look at him. Look at me. <laughs> All your wildest dreams are about to come true. I don't know about that. <laughs> He's wearing the bikini from the first film. <laughs> <laughs> da -da -da -da. <laughs> Can they show a rock hard erection in a Bond film? What the fuck? <laughs> I hate James Bond now. <laughs> Those crazy Brits. They did it again. <laughs> yeah. Another 10 out of 10. <laughs> Henry Cavill's was like, yeah, I'm going to stick with Superman. Yeah, right. I don't think I want to be James Bond anymore. No, I don't know who they're going to do next. We're going to get Harry Styles, James Bond. <laughs> this is anorexic James Bond. I don't yeah, really do, like, it. fighting stuff anymore. I just kind of, like, pout. Ooh. James, I told you it was a black tie event. Why'd you wear a red dress? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you dressed like a grandmother? <laughs> Why do you look like you're a part of the Red Hat Purple Dress Club? <laughs> Is that a pearl necklace? <laughs> I got it on the street corner. 
Oh, you yeah. mean death roll necklace? <laughs> <Yeah>. Oh, <laughs> one eye shut. <laughs> I think I have pink eye. <laughs> the, the critics are calling it the best Bond ever. <laughs> He's a total yes queen slut. <laughs> Directed by Olivia Wilde. <laughs> <laughs> What's her new movie that everybody's going ape shit about? Uh, Call Me Darling or some shit? Yeah, something like that. It's Darling something. Yeah, Don't Worry Darling or something. Yeah. I, if it's, it's Don't Worry like Darling, Kirk actually, shit. that's like very ironic that the movie is called Don't Worry Darling and she went and cheated on her husband because that sounds like what you would say to your husband that you're cheating on. Poor guy just wanted to hook up with the chick from Tron Legacy. Yeah, that's what that's we're all thinking of. That's the only good thing she's ever been in. Olivia Wilde, that chick in Tron Legacy. Great movie. That's what we were all thinking. Name one other film. <laughs> I don't know. She was in that really dog shit horror one where she like came back as like a zombie. Oh yeah, wasn't that one of the uh like Lazarus or something? Yeah, wasn't that by those dudes that did like creep? Was it really the Duplass brothers from League? Yeah, I think it was a Duplass brothers thing. That's hilarious if it was. It looked like shit. I never saw it. <laughs> it was alright. It wasn't terrible or anything, but it, you know. It was no autopsy of Jane Doe. It was kind of like one of those films. Uh, shit, I forget what those movies were called now. Do you remember like there was that horror series like 10 or 15 years ago? It was like, oh, damn, I got to look this up now. Talking about the Dark Pictures that. ones or whatever they were. Uh, like dark Ride, I think, I think, was on it. Let me see. Pretty sure I know what you're talking about. Eight films to die for. Yep. Yeah, it was. It felt like one of those kind of movies. Where it's like, it's all right, but, you know. Yeah, you know, just enough to completely. get distributed. Pretty much. But it has, like, somewhat recognizable actors in it. And you're like, oh, I know that guy from that thing. Yeah, that's a dude I know. But he's not one of the dudes. He's just a dude. Man, I gotta get new cartridges for these. And I keep saying it and forgetting to order them. I've been watching videos on Scorn. Have you played that yet? Uh, It's on Xbox Game Pass. So I've been meaning to check it out, but... Or the not sound design is great. It sounds so disgusting. Piece. Every moment is just disgusting. <laughs> yeah, it looks gross. People keep doing edits of fucking Beavis and Butthead over it because it's all like squishy sex noises. So they'll just add yeah, in Beavis and Butthead giggling to the fucking and there's game. Dong all over the place. Yeah, I've never seen so much dong in a game. Yeah, they beat Since me to Donkey the punch. Kong. <laughs> that was gonna be the Voidwalker game. Just tons of dong. <laughs> hang dong press yeah. x hang dong like a real demon <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we Ooh, were hoping sized upgrade scorn, <laughs> yeah scorn beat us to the punch darn it uh, i would have sworn though that scorn came out like three years ago yeah because the game's been in development forever I think they did like a demo or something a while ago too. It's crazy too. Like I was reading a bunch of shit like diehard gamer nerds are like still shitting on it because it only runs on like, uh, like 30 FPS. It's like, yeah, you see what that fucking game looks like? Of course it runs at 30 FPS. There's so much fucking gross ass detail they packed into that game. Oh my gosh, that whole thing is designed. Every single square inch is. 
Yeah, and it's gross as shit. And it's like, there's so much in there, so much intricate detail that's packed in there. And people are like, God damn it, this game runs like dog shit. And I'm like, it's always going to be a give and a take. Like, I'm, I'm playing through the new Call of Duty campaign on a PlayStation right now. And, uh, or PS4. I'm sure it looks fucking awesome on PS5 with a better frame rate and everything, but I'm still enjoying the shit out of it at 30 frames. Looks great on the PS4 still, too. I was like, wow, I don't know how it's doing that, but it looks fucking rad. Game is, like, for Campaign 2, is hard as shit, surprisingly. Does it have a negotiator role where you calmly ask for peace and everybody's no, happy and safe? Blast everybody that's not like you. Son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. The good old days of Call of Duty. Like the, no, we just the, shoot him in the face. <laughs> the one that's going around that everybody's all butthurt about, where you got to de-escalate a situation by aiming your gun in civilians' faces. Huh. I was like, that well, was I got to tell you, if you don't have a gun, it definitely makes you back down. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, it definitely de-escalates the situation unless you are a dumbass. Oh, de-escalates you right into the ground, I've heard sometimes. Yeah. It's like, uh, <laughs> guys, I don't know how else you think the military de-escalates things, but the other option is not good. They can point it at you or they can fire it at you. <laughs> it's, not, it's not pleasant. I heard those things sting. Yeah. I look out for it. It's like, uh... Also, it's a fucking game. <laughs> All I ever think of now is that Will Ferrell skit, with the fucking SNL skit with the dogs. Also, don't forget, you're a fucking dog. <laughs> like, that's everything now, guys. Go outside, touch some grass. Smoke a little, have a drink. Touch your girlfriend's titties. I promise it'll <laughs> all be all right. Go outside, show your neighbor your dick. Have fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get arrested. Live a little. Get molested in jail. <laughs> Never speak to your wife again because you're too ashamed to get molested. Yeah, Kill yourself. <laughs> this is a terrible advice show. Cut back. <laughs> Realize now that you're in prison, you've lived too much and you need to cut back. <laughs> <laughs> But you still owe money to to the Latin King, so you gotta sell some hooch. Yeah. To some guy named Carlos Slim. Ba -da 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 -da. Yeah, we can't use that name. That's the real richest man in the world. Which still makes me laugh. Hysterically. Is he on Kanye's good side or bad side? Probably good side. Then he's a guy on my side. <laughs> <laughs> he's Mexican. <laughs> what was it? Was it Rogan I learned about that guy from? And I was like, that can't be real. And he is. Yeah, he's like the richest man in Mexico, right? In the world. In the world? Yeah. My voice, my voice went up at that one. I was so shocked. In the world? We, yeah, we just don't claim it because he's Mexican. So in America, we say it's an American guy. We're like, that don't count. Yeah, okay. These guys uh, can't be rich. <laughs> yeah, everybody here is like, since when is Mexico part of the world? <laughs> Does he mean pesos? Yeah, right. Listen, listen, Slim. Pesos and dollars ain't the same thing. You can have a million pesos all day. <laughs> Do you mean rich with love? Or do you mean rich <laughs> with rich? <laughs> yeah. Rich with ablelas? <laughs> Does your abuelita know you have money? Just totally condescending the whole time. <laughs> Just Warren Buffett and, <laughs> and uh, I almost said Steve Jobs. What the fuck's the guy's name from uh, Microsoft? 
Bill yes. Gates. Steve. Just Bill Gates talking yeah. shit to him the whole time. Oh, yeah, I'm sure you have a lot of tacos there, Carlos. Like, uh, I have more money than both of you. <laughs> I have a house made of solid gold. <laughs> I have killed many men. <laughs> sure, Carlos. Yeah. I literally killed Steve Jobs. <laughs> <laughs> he he called me Carlos Fat. <laughs> I said, why not make the iPods green? It's a nice color. He said, no, white. So I had to execute it. <laughs> Cancer didn't kill him. His stubbornness <laughs> isn't what did him in. I paid for the cancer. <laughs> I invented it. <laughs> yeah, I man, my Mexican cancer. <laughs> oh yeah, didn't they just announce Mexican coke, but way worse. Speaking of iPhone stuff and Steve Jobs and all that, didn't they just announce that uh, as of 2024 <laughs> they have to roll back all their proprietary chargers now? No idea. Yeah, I think that just went through in court. I was seeing some stuff about it today on Twitter. I didn't get to like look it up and verify. I don't understand it. what's what's the problem? What's going on? Apple's had like proprietary chargers and shit for their phones and computers for years now, and it basically uh, forces you to buy their shit, and then they price gouge it at a premium and say it does all this extra shit that it doesn't, like lightning charging and all this stuff. And they oh, basically. Right, right. They pigeonhole you into like like the iPhone for the last like five or six generations hasn't been like a USB C. It's been this stupid fucking proprietary thing that Apple came up with and they fucking suck. Yeah. And I guess it just got passed where as of twenty twenty four they need to undo all that proprietary bullshit they've been doing, so I can hear like your wife listening to something in the background. No, you can't. <laughs> it's totally silent here. Just the softest, like someone talking in the background. Just hardcore pornography in the background. It'd be hilarious. <laughs> She's watching gay porn. <laughs> She's watching By a her. Jane Bond movie with Nick Nolte. <laughs> <With everybody. laughs> Jane Bond. I'm about to bond my mouth to that member. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Nolte. <laughs> <laughs> I can't sure. get down on my knees. It hurts. I'm too old. Yeah, just, right. just stand there and let me go to town. I'm going to lay back on the bed and throw my head backwards. <laughs> <laughs> pull my hair. I don't have much left, but just pull it. <laughs> pull it all out. Whatever you can get. I don't care. You think you could carry sexy? <laughs> Do you have a belt? I like to get choked. <laughs> you think Where you are you going? Carry. Get back here. Ah, <laughs> oh, hell. Help string me up in this closet. <laughs> Yes. I only have one more bar to do, I think. I'm he just shits all, all the stuff they give him for James Bond, all his little, like, you know, the Walter PPK that he uses? Like, I don't want that shit. Give me a real gun. Just keeps putting it up his ass. <laughs> I'm going to keister. What the fuck am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> Aston Martin. I can't fit in that little thing. <laughs> Nick, where'd you put that gun? I keistered it. <laughs> you gotta stop doing that. <laughs> what about the special laser? Keistered it. <laughs> Where's Q? You don't want to know. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Q-shaped imprint in his guts. <laughs> Keistered him. <laughs> I'm absorbing him. Taking his power. <laughs> for, for nutrients. It's I'll the need quickening. him in the field. <laughs> the quickening. <laughs> James Bond Lander. <laughs> <laughs> He 
He's just showing up in every role that Sean Connery had. <laughs> yeah, we need we just need our own sketch comedy show called like Pitch Guys where it's just always cutaways from a pitch room. <laughs> yeah, it's you're us trying to sell dog. these movies. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah, Nolte would be. Sometimes a woman needs a good slap. That's all I'm saying. Right. He's probably at that age, like those guys that need to, uh, they take a job because they need to maintain their SAG status. (laughs) Yeah, he's definitely sagging. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. You got to keep this man sagging. That man's had a battle with gravity for decades. If he's not, if he's not in with SAG after, he's gonna SAG after. If you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, he's I think that's covered a, in spirit gum, so he won't SAG as much. <laughs> I think that's still a thing where they they literally have to be in like one movie a year that pays like so much money in order to still qualify for, like, the guild. Oh, and get, like, their insurance and shit? Yeah. It's horrible, but... That's, like, how a lot of, like, guys back in the day would game, like, old, like, glorious Golden Age actors into being in dog shit movies, because it was like, hey, like, you want to still get your SAG benefits and everything? (laughs) You just need to be in this... (laughs) Fucking dog shit movie. <laughs> Is Alec Guinness in some weird teen comedy in the 80s? Mm. Wearing shades and squeezing boobs. <laughs> Let's party down. <laughs> he just goes off camera and cries. I used to do Shakespeare. I used to do him too. I'm that old. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Bill, we used to fuck a ton. That's our that's our million dollar movie right there, Jeff. Bill Shakespeare, and it's just a modern retelling of Shakespeare. Of the man himself. This we try and do it as a stage play where it's it's Shakespeare, but we get Bill Burr to play him. <laughs> just goes off off a script and just starts ad libbing, yeah, talking about screaming. how much the audience sucks. Yes, fuck it sucks. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good Bill Burr. I'm not teethy enough. I can't do it tonight. I haven't started drinking enough yet. You need to get your face redder. Yeah, there's more teeth and anger in it, and for some reason I can do that when I'm drunk. I think it's a New England thing. Yeah, you are from the same part of the world. Yeah. We get incredibly teethy when we're angry. It's weird. Like a wild dog, we like bear a lot of teeth. (laughs) <laughs> like I don't know how else to describe it <laughs> like, <laughs> alright I can't do any more with this tonight uh, without completely ruining it and I don't want to keep you up all night I know you're still the the boy with the real job I'm going to put two gigantic tits right here tomorrow after I fill this in red too it's going to close uh, up though yeah I just redid that cover sweet and i'll put some boobs in here i didn't realize before either brilliant brian de palma on the cover of the composition his hand is literally like touching in between her titties like the alignment <laughs> of it I was like, uh-huh. oh de palma you subtle bastard but yeah that'll be resting i got my creepy heroined out pacino from cruising last night Nice. Uh, which I believe goes here now. We got our Pacino, our body double, 
Boom, boom. And we only got two more days left. Looking I awesome, man. Leave that right there. Thank you, sir. Let me check this out one more time. Make sure. Yeah, we got Delirium tomorrow night, which was the really rad one that I wanted to do. I think that's the one with the bug lady in it that I wanted to draw. Uh, I don't know how easy that one is to find. And then uh, 28th is the editor, Adam Brooks and Matthew Kennedy's weird Jalo parody. It's a hilarious one. It's a lot of fun. And that's going to be the final movie of the month. Because then uh, the 29th is Create Your Own Jalo Protagonist. 30th is Create Your Own Jalo Killer. And then the 31st, we'll be doing our own Jalo horror movie posters where you'll take your killer and your protagonist, come up with some sort of cool poster composition, do it all up. I'm going to try and color mine in that time and everything. I might have to pick up some more markers and stuff as well. Uh, have you been thinking about your uh, your killer? Yeah, I was, originally, I was originally going to cheat and just do leather and bloodied teeth, but <laughs> I don't think I'm going to do that. Because uh, it's like, hey, Jeff already did the design for me. Perfect. I just need to do my own <laughs> version of it. <laughs> but I think I'm going to do uh, something else. Uh, but I didn't want to... Again, I didn't want to cheat and have too much uh, planning. If that makes any sense. So like try to do it organically, because then I'll come up with an idea then and there. Uh, that or I'll fall back on that doing the leather and bloodied teeth. Are you going to come on with me for Halloween? Uh, I might be able to. I think so. It's like That's my cat after, the door. After you and your lady wander, you do your spooky annual wandering. Yeah, isn't it like it's Monday or something, right? It yeah, it's weird as shit this year. That's why I was like, yeah, I'm just going to do... I'll probably I might even go live at like eight that night and I'm just gonna fucking go until I'm done, basically. I was expecting it to take me quite a few hours, so uh cool. people are welcome to pop in whenever, but I'm doing mine on an eleven by seventeen board. And then it'll probably oh, go up shit. on the the Death Curse site or something. The first full board I've done in like ten years. Uh, Damn. Yeah. And then I got these today. These are only 9x12s, but this is looking like it might be what I'm going to do, the Outstanding Violations pages on. Really fucking nice. thick boards, though. Uh, but 9x12s, it's sort of like half the size. It means I won't waste as much paint, and I'll probably get it done a lot quicker. But uh, we'll see. Uh, but I'm going to end the stream for now. We're not going to keep Jeff up any longer. Go check out... Alterna, the Alterna Fall Campaign, the link is in des the description. As always, we've been promoting it all month long, but this is like the last 24 hours, roughly. Last day. Tomorrow night, I am probably going to do uh, the Halloween stream and then maybe a little Cade draw stream. We'll do some, some Cade sketch cards or maybe a sketch cover or something. But uh, <clears throat> we'll see. And maybe I'll harass Jeff into coming back on with me for that since it's his book, too. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, go grab a copy if you haven't already. Link's in the description, and we will see you tomorrow at 9 again. Stay Take girthy, dude.